Hey y'all and welcome to a new video. So what is the best way in Max to play a video? So to play and show a video to your audience. So let's say for example that this is your interactive installation or this is your BJ set or your uh, interactive set. Whatever you want to show to your audience and you want to use some footage of your own that you want to modify in Max and apply some effect and filters and stuff. So what is the best way to do that? And when I say best way, I mostly mean in terms of efficiency. So what will allow us to put the greater amount of effects and uh, have the greater fluidity in our output. I'm going to show you a couple of things to go in this direction. So first of all, let's delete everything here. So when working with videos in Max and only with videos and video effects, so we don't want any 3D shapes, we just want to work with footage. Now, when we just want to do that, there is no reason in Max to use matrices. So if you're familiar with the concept of a jitter matrix, you know that it can contain some image data. So we can load an image inside a matrix and this matrix is going to contain this image data. Could be also, for example, a frame of a movie. We can then visualize it using a GTP window and everything is cool, but this is highly inefficient. And why is that? Because this all works on the CPU of our computer, but the CPU is not the best tool in our computer to work with a lot of data. In fact, uh, every pixel inside this jitter matrix and inside this image is a little structure that contains the color data of that pixel. And we have a lot of these little structures, right? Like this video is 320 by 240, which is already 76,800 pixels. And that's a big amount of data. If we consider that every one of these pixels has four planes inside, because it has the alpha, red, green, and blue, then we are looking at a big amount of data and the CPU is not the best tool to work with that big amount of data. Now the best tool in the computer to work with these kind of things is the GPU. So let's delete all this stuff and let's enter the GPU realm. Now in Max we got a way to communicate with the GPU which is called OpenGL. As many other programs that work with computer graphics, Max as well uses OpenGL to communicate with the GPU. So this is a set of instructions that Max can use to communicate with our graphic processing unit inside the computer. So the GPU is the perfect tool to working with big amount of parallel data, so data that must be processed all at the same time because it has a lot of cores inside. So while the CPU mostly has like four to eight cores, the GPU has thousands of cores and every one of those cores works on some of those pixels we were talking before. So this really makes everything much faster. Now, in order to work with OpenGL and the GPU in Max, the first thing we need is an object called JIT World. So the JIT world, when we create it, it will create this window. And this is the rendering window in which we want to then project our final video. Okay, this we want to send then to the Beamer and to display to our audience. Now it's a bit annoying that when I click somewhere in the patch, this window actually disappears. So what I want to do is to give to this at object the attribute floating, which means the window will now float on top of the patch and we never go back. Cool. Then this object also needs a context name. So the first argument and actually only argument of the JIT world is the name of this environment, which we will call the rendering context. So let's call it, for example, my GTX, like my context. Now it's a bit annoying that every time I recreate the JIT world, the window appears always there. So I will go and give it an attribute to the JIT world, which is window position, and I will put it like 600, 200. So now it will appear here. Not a big improvement, but better than before. Cool. Now the JIT world object is not active by default, so it's not working. It needs to be activated a bit like the Metro object, right? So we can activate it with a toggle object. And there we go, it is now working and it's rendering a kind of a gray background into our rendering window. Cool. So let's now get to playing a movie. Now we got the Vizi package, right? Which recently, I think since a couple of years has been updated and now it only totally works with the GPU. So it only totally works with textures and not matrices. So let's make actually this distinction. So the CPU, when working with images, 
works with matrices, so max matrices. While the GPU, when working with images, so frames of a video, for example, works with textures. And all the objects that work with textures then are objects that work with the GPU. Now the busy objects we were saying are all objects that work with the GPU. So they can actually be used in conjunction with Jit World and they will give us the best performance when playing a video. For example, the player object, which is this very big boy, um, will play a video. For example, if I just drag and drop one and output a texture. So if we connect a message box here, you can see that it says GGL texture. It doesn't say JIT matrix like a JIT movie object would. It just says JIT GL textures. Cool, but let's get one step back and actually use the JIT movie object, which allows us to have a greater control on what we are playing and how we are playing it. So if we just leave the, GP, the JIT movie object as it is, and we read uh, some movie inside uh, with, the, for example, I could just drag and drop a movie inside a JIT movie object, or I can just uh, create a drop file object and drop the movies inside here, which give us kind of a bigger surface where to drop stuff. I can just do something like that. And as you can see, it's outputting a JIT matrix. It's also actually having some noise from this video, which I don't want. So I set the attribute volume zero uh, for the sound. So this is actually giving us a JIT matrix. Now I made a video some time ago in which I explained the difference between CPU and GPU. So, so this could actually be a good moment to, to watch it. I will put the link in the description. But in short, the JIT matrix, as we said, works on the CPU. So it's data that is going to be processed by the CPU. And we said we want only to work with the GPU because this is the best way to work with videos and images in Max and in general in every other computer program. So what we want to do is to go to the JIT movie and give it the attribute output texture one. Cool. And now as you can see, it's not outputting anymore a matrix, it's outputting a texture. Now we said before also that um, all the GPU objects need to be kind of connected to this rendering context, which is created by the JIT world and we call the MyGTX. So the JIT movie is by default already connected to this context when we give it the output texture one attribute, but in order to explicit this connection, we can give it the draw to attribute and then MyGTX, so the name of our context. So now we are sure that this JIT movie object uh, is going to output a texture that resides in the same context uh, created by this JIT world object and not another JIT world, for example, which we could have in another patch. Cool. If now, uh, let's try to load a movie, for example, the Sunflower, which is a full HD movie. And if we want to display this movie, we could, for example, create a JITP window and just display it inside our patch. And since Max 8, this actually is very efficient because the JITP window now works by default with textures. So this is not going to make our patch heavier. So we can display it in a JITP window, but we actually say we wanted to display it in our um, rendering window. So what we can do is to simply to connect this to the input of the JIT world. And there we go. It's going to display it in the GTP window by maintaining the correct proportions of the video. If we don't want to maintain the correct proportions, we can check the preserve aspect uh, attribute of the JIT world, unflag it, and then it's not going to maintain the proportions. It's going to simply fill the wall window with our video. But I would like to maintain the proportions because I find it cool. If we want to change the color of the background, we can simply give to the JIT world the erase color attribute and set it to some values which are in the range 0 to 1 and represent the red, green, and blue and the alpha channel of a color. So if we want to change this dynamically, we can do like this, patch unlocked, right click on the input of the JIT world, check the erase color attribute and uh, lock the patch, choose a background color, activate the JIT world because I, I just deactivated it by recreating it. And now we can change the color of the background. Okay, cool. So let's now make a little benchmark and check how much our performance is improved since uh, when working with the uh, texture in contrast with working with matrices. So let's create a JIT.FPS GUI object which will allow us to check the frame rate. And this was a bit fast. This is called JIT.FPS GUI object. 
and by default if we connect something to it it's going to simply represent the frame rate of uh, how many times in one second this stuff comes inside in this case this is a bang that comes uh, out from this outlet uh, for, for every frame we got a bang and this is simply telling us how many bangs per second we have. At the moment it's 60. Now we can change the FPS uh, attribute of the JIT world. For example, let's set it to 400. But by default, the JIT world has also an attribute that syncs the frame rate with the current refresh rate of our screen. This is in order to prevent some flickering and some unpleasant effect. But uh, for this purpose, we can just set it to zero. So it's not going to sync anymore with the, the screen. So I connect this to the JIT world. I click on this message and we can see that we jump to 120. Um, but actually, if I delete this other GTP window, which I think was still kind of uh, tying our refresh rate to the rate of the screen, uh, then we can see that it jumps up to 400 frames. Let's actually augment this to something like 600. And we can see that it jumps as much as 400, 500 sometimes. It's very variable at this kind of uh, frame rate. Uh, it's not very constant, the frame rate. But this depends also on uh, the amount of GPU power available at every frame. So this is kind of give us uh, not such a stable frame rate. We mostly want to work with 60 frames per second. But this shows us that we are achieving a pretty high frame rate to around 500 frames per second. Now, if I right click on the input of the JIT movie and check the output texture attribute and I deflag it now we can see that our frame rate drops a lot now we go to 140 in contrast to 500 right so this is a big big frame rate drop also if we take a busy module like effect and we take a random effect like embosser and I connect this between our JIT world and the JIT movie and you can see that this is uh, applying an effect to our video. And this is by default an um, effect that works with the GPU. So this would not make sense to send a matrix to this effect, apply the effect, and then this will output the text to the JIT world. As you can see, the frame rate dropped drastically. And this is no bueno. So let me say that once again. Every time we want to work with videos in Max, we always, always want to use a JIT movie with output texture or the player module of the Big Z package. And then we can send it directly to the JIT world or to some other object like GGL Video Plane, which does the same thing. So it's basically not really much different. And you're probably at this point asking yourself, yeah, but I like all this uh, matrix effect that I got, like the JIT op and all the other matrix operators that work with matrices. Yeah, but actually, we can do the same working on the GPU by using first a big amount of pre-created effects that you can find in the file browser. And also we can create our own by using objects like the JIT GLPX object which also needs the name of our context because it's a GPU object that must be tied to our context. So for example, let's say that I want to replace the JIT op plus object. So I want to sum something to this video. Well, I can simply, and I'm duplicating this video just to have something to sum. So I connect this here and then I get another video. And cool and by default is actually already doing the addition so if we lock the patch and double click on this object we can see that it has a, a couple of inputs one output uh, and it's very similar to jit gen actually it's the same but it works on the gpu and we can use this object to create all the effects that the jit operator is doing just uh, believe me on that so for example we can multiply two stuff we can divide it and then you are maybe thinking, okay, but with the GTOP objects, I'm also able to just sum a quantity to this video. Well, we can do this as well. We can just need to create a parameter and uh, give it a name, for example, quantity, a default value, create a plus operator, sum this, for example, to the first video and just output then the, the result of this thing. And then just send a message with written quantity dollar one so it's like if we created our own attribute for this object and then we can just sum a quantity to our video right so this is not really a tutorial on ggl picks i just want to show you that we can do everything that we can do with jit op we can do it also with ggl picks so to recap 
when working with videos and not 3D shapes, just videos and video effects and maybe also audio interactive video effects, this for sure, why not? We always want to work with textures and a GPU. So forget about JIT movie without output texture one and forget about JIT op and all the other JIT matrices efforts. They can all be recreated mostly, mostly all of them on the GPU. So I hope this was useful and I hope this will improve your patching. Now for further tutorials on working with the GGL pixel and GPU objects in general, I encourage you to check out my video tutorials. There is actually an archive on my website which contains all the videos I've ever made, all the tutorials I've ever made, and also contains all the patches that I ever released and uh, which mostly can be downloaded from my Patreons, but some of them are free to download for everybody Then I even got some Ableton devices and so on. So, um, good. Thank you very much for following and uh, see you in the next video. Happy patching in the meanwhile. Ciao.